What's up guys, how you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. Mm. In today's video, we're going there. We're talking about um, something from the past. Really, we're gonna treat this as a story in a new segment on the YouTube channel called Storytime with P and M. Storytime, and so yeah, we, we're gonna take this opportunity to dive into important stories from our past that we feel like have impacted us and could potentially impact you guys. And sometimes they're gonna be heavier, sometimes they're just gonna be really fun. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're gonna have to do with relationships and sometimes not. Yes, but first, before we dive into story time with P&M, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe because we are here to help you guys. Oh, navigate <laughs> dating, love, and intimacy. Dating marriage. We're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. <laughs> wow, he's over here telling me to practice. <laughs> he got it wrong. I sent her a text earlier and said, practice the new slogan. <laughs> and here we go. But um, in all reality, guys, love you. Grateful that you're here. I'm excited to start this new segment and open it up. And Morgan actually uh, thought of today's video. Yes, I thought of today's video topic. There are some people, trolls, who are always like, Paul is always making Morgan talk about her past. It's disgusting. He should be ashamed. You're no better, Paul, that you were a virgin and she wasn't. Okay, everyone, shut it. <laughs> I love talking about my past personally, you guys, because I think that the Lord, one, it just shows like the Lord's work and where he brought me from there to here. Um, sorry, I got distracted by my hair. You're fine. But also just, yeah, like... Being able to encourage you guys through my past and what I've learned from my past is like an amazing thing. It's a testimony. It's part of who I am. I'm not ashamed of it at all. Like we learn, we grow. And you guys know Morgan and I are perhaps a little more honest than some other people. It just kind of, that's just how we roll. Yeah. We like to be honest. We like to share even the not so squeaky clean moments from our past. So that said, shout out to our pay. Oh. Hold on. Oh, go ahead. Hold on, beautiful. <laughs> Shout out to our patrons. Thank you guys for supporting us. We don't get many brand deals because of the nature of our content, how honest we are sometimes, particularly when it comes to the Christian faith. We sometimes don't hold back, and the brands don't always love that. So if you guys want to consider supporting us on Patreon, it is the reason why we're here. Our patrons are a huge, huge part of this channel. Thank you guys. We do patron only Zoom calls. We do patron encouragement videos weekly. Uh, we got the uh, Discord yes. community, all that. Become a patron. The link is below. All right, Morgan, start us off. <clears throat> this is the story of how I. What, what do we title this? We titled it um, <laughs> How Morgan's Premarital. How Morgan's okay, Premarital we, Sex, sex began. began. Okay. We're not trying to be... Let us begin. I feel like that was super goofy. <laughs> or, this is not goofy. This is not a goofy topic, Morgan. No, but still, we can laugh about it. All right, all right. All right. I just, you know, it was story time. Story time. We, we are, open the story. Yeah, we expect books at the beginning of each story time. Go ahead, Morgan. Yeah, that's my favorite book right now. <laughs> um, all right, so I have notes, so I will be looking down at them. I was 17 years old. I had just gotten out of i dated two guys okay between 15 and 17 one for like two years <laughs> and one for three months um i was sitting down one day and i remember praying to the lord god the next guy that you put in my life is gonna be my husband <laughs> and so that is how the story begins. <laughs> so, no, I love it because I, I was super curious. Like, how is Morgan going to kick this off? <laughs> what is going to be like that opening moment? Yes. So it opens this <laughs> this tragic story, this tragedy. <laughs> no, seriously, though, it, it opens with a prayer. That is not what I anticipated. Yep. <laughs> so I was had been reading books like... Um, for young women only uh wait for me by rebecca st james shout out rebecca st james yes which she talks a lot about saving sexual purity or whatever being sexually pure until marriage in that book um i feel like there was one other but i can't remember it i never did read the book i kissed dating but goodbye i had heard of it i thought about reading it whatever 
Um, so I was very much in the mindset of like date to marry. And, you know, I was raised in a Christian home. I was raised that sex is beautiful within marriage. Um, and I had that desire to save sex for marriage. So. And real quick, I know that I just said that's where this tragedy begins. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> redemption arc. Okay. Yes. It's so. Yes. Chill. Just chill, people. <laughs> chill. chill, people. Chill, people. Chill. Um, so yes, all right, prayed to the Lord, yada yada. I'm done with dating God, so the next guy you bring in my life, that's gonna be my husband. Morgan, do you, did you have the tattoo at this point? No, no, no. no okay, no. all right, all right. I was 17. Zip. I met this guy through, I was signed with a modeling agency, and I met this guy kind of through there. And we started talking on Facebook, and then he asked me out on a date. And so we went out on our first date, and I remember telling him on our first date, I'm dating for marriage, and I'm saving sex for marriage. And he said... You said both of those things on your first date with this guy, yes. that you're saving sex for marriage. Yes. Are you surprised at all? No, that is... That is <laughs> mm. Wow. I like how wow. he knows the story, but he's so I, proud of me. I feel like I... I I don't know. I, I have not heard the story in the context of story time with P&M. Ah, Check yes. the playlist. We just made a playlist <laughs> on the homepage. Um, yes. So we, on our first date, he also says the same things of I'm a virgin. I'm saving sex for marriage. I'm, I look at dating as like, I want to find a wife through the, that's why I date. It's not just for the heck of it. Um, and so I was like, wow, okay. This guy's like checking off all the boxes. Morgan, just quick question. Do you think that he meant it? That he meant that? I do think that he meant that. I don't think he he understood, though, what that truly meant or what it looked like to save sex for okay. marriage. All right. Um, I hope that he meant it. <laughs> okay. I'm fine with giving him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was kind of where it all began. Um, we started dating, like we kept going on dates. He asked me to be his girlfriend. I said yes. Um, he was showing, he had, you know, we talked on our first date in the first several days about like my faith. I was working at a church at this point. Um, I was, actually no, I was about to start working at a church, but I was very involved in the church that I was going to. Um, and we, he just knew that that like the Lord was a big part of my life and he claimed and said that God was a big part of his life that he grew up in a Christian home etc cetera, etc cetera. so a month or two after we were dating he actually got baptized I baptized him <laughs> so real quick Morgan I don't I don't mean to like cut you off but I That's love fine. the way this story is set up because it's gonna be so relatable to so many young people in our audience Yes. So many people. I mean, you were kind of the poster child yes. for <laughs> I want to be have sexual purity until I'm married. Yeah. And you're getting ready to start working in the church. You say the right things on your first date. I, I love the way this is set up and it, because <laughs> it's going to relate and hopefully it's going to move mm -hmm. some people that think that they're safe. Think that they're safe. They've had those types of conversations. Exactly. Yeah. So. Exactly. Keep going. Keep listening, people. Um, so, all right, we began dating, and eight months into the relationship, we broke up. We had not done anything other than kiss on the lips. Um, and eight months in, I can't really remember why we broke up, but we broke up for, like, whatever. And I remember the next day after we broke up, I was, like, crying or whatever and sad, but I had this thought and I believe that it was God or Holy Spirit, whatever, they're all the same, um, telling me. Three in one, three three distinct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and one trinity. Yes, yes, yes. You, you guys know what I'm saying. Um, told me or placed this thought in my mind of this is not your husband. So I sat with that thought, but you need to understand that I did not have any friends at this point. I had like one friend and she lived like four hours away. So I never saw her. Um, and she traveled for work and whatever. Um, and I was 
struggling pretty heavily with depression. This was when I had just recently, within the past few months, been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which that's a whole nother story time. Whole nother story time with <laughs> P&M. Comment below if you want to see that, hear that. Um, but I, the thought of being alone, the thought of not having a friend because he was my only friend as well as my boyfriend, like just sounded awful to me. So we ended up getting back together. And I took that thought. Well, just let me make sure. So the thought of you n being broken up with him, you didn't have any other close friends, so that that's what... Yeah, the I thought of being alone like made me get back together with him. Dang. So I took the thought of this is not your husband, and I just shoved it way, way, way away. <laughs> Put well, it way down, ignored it. Community outside of your significant other while you're dating, big. Big. big, 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 big. Okay, keep going. So at this point, I was working at the church, and um, we, I don't know. Um, it's not like just all of a sudden we started having sex, you guys. That's never really how it happens, I personally don't think. It's one thing after another being crossed, one line after the other after the other. And we never, ever had an actual, like, we want to save sex for marriage conversation, so what are we going to do to make sure we save sex for marriage? Whether it's with one another or other people, what are we going to do to protect that deep desire of ours? Or at least it was a deep desire of mine. Um, and so... So you never... You guys, on your first date, yeah. both said you want to save sex for marriage, but then after that, for like, that was it. your eight months of dating, mm -hmm. and then when you got back together, there was never one other conversation about how we're going to implement boundaries? We would have conversations where we would cross a boundary, and then I would sit him down and be like, we can't do that again. We're not crossing that boundary again. And he'd be like, okay. And then it wasn't like, and this is how we're not going to cross the boundary. Um, we would just cross the boundary again and then cross another boundary. And so, yeah, there was no true conversation. What's that saying about like, uh, foolish, it's the definition of <laughs> foolishness is thinking that something's going to change, but doing the exact same stuff, something like yeah, that. So, yes, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Do you think, when, and, when, and that's when, true. when you mentioned the eight months and all you did up to the eight month period when you guys broke up was kiss, kiss mm -hmm. on the lips. Do you feel like that played a role or no? Were you, did, did that, when you guys were just kissing on the lips, making out, I'm assuming, or no? Yes. Okay, during those <laughs> makeouts, and I don't want to get too visual. Right. Um, but I'm curious, like, do you feel like that was evoking other emotions? Was that for you guys a gateway to the next thing? Oh, definitely. Making out. Again, it's like kissing is one thing or holding hands hugging then kissing then making out then whatever else the the ball gets rolling for sure unless you're so strict that you're like making out with our hands up in the air is the only thing we're ever gonna do which is like just why even play with that fire um so yeah it was definitely a thing okay. and the fact that not only do we we dated two or three and a half years, so that was another role in this whole thing um, because three and a half years is a really long time to just kiss on the lips, like to just do that and like not cross any other boundaries unless you are so, so intentional, like you're most likely gonna cross boundaries. Again, Morgan, without getting too specific, mm -hmm. I, I think that there is, um, this could be very educational to get a little bit more specific if you're okay with it. <laughs> if you're okay with I'm it. I'm <laughs> okay with it. Can you, can, I, I just, I would like to, to know if you're okay with it. Um, the first time that you had mm -hmm. premarital sex, how did you, how, I mean, how did that I'm happen? I'm going to get to that. Okay. okay. I, I didn't know if you were kind of, okay. Yes. So, yeah, like I said, it's not like we just all of a sudden started having sex. It was very gradual, crossing one line after the next. Um, we would have conversations of, we shouldn't do that again. And then we'd do it again because we never made place anything in whatever our lives. So, um, like I said, at this time, I was working at a church, but I was not being filled up myself. I was constantly pouring out, always working. I never went to service because I was literally always working, and they didn't have it set up at that point at that church where, like, no matter what, at one of the services you're going to go to. Yeah. Um, 
in, you know, whatever, like no church is perfect. So I was not being filled up. I was not personally in the word on my own. I was teaching, you know, babies and children. I was in children's ministry and was, um, like, you know, telling the baby Bible stories. Like I wasn't at home in the word pursuing God on my own. Well, there's so many lessons in this story. There is so many <laughs> lessons I know. in this story. I'm, it's, I'm having trouble containing myself. <laughs> Shut, That's why shut, I enjoy telling this. Shut your mouth, Paul. <laughs> Let the woman speak. <laughs> so many lessons. Um, yeah, so I was not in the word at all, I would say. Um, I had my boss slash, she was like, my boss slash my closest friend. She was several years older than me, had a family, um, but we were very close, who I love so, so much, but I was not honest with, and she was not necessarily like asking me deep questions about my relationship with this guy. Um, you know, she was like involved in my relationship in that like he was around all the time and whatever, he would come to church and help volunteer, like whatever, um, as twisted as it is. But um, I had this ridiculous, irrational fear that was placed in my mind by this guy who would tell me like okay i would like i said was struggling severely with depression and part of my depression like really took a deep heavy dark turn when i was living in sin with this guy for a long period of time like i got so sick of like living in this sin i wanted to confess i wanted to stop i i started being the one that was like we're not doing this anymore and I don't want to say like he manipulated me, but I don't really have any other words to say. And Morgan, this is after you guys have already started having sex. Yes. So you're okay. You're gonna back up though, right? Yes. Okay. Um, but he was telling me like we can't tell people that we crossed this line. We can't tell people that we did this because they'll break us up. They'll we'll get in big trouble. We'll like whatever. I just had this very like irrational fear. So I was never talking to anyone about my relationship with this guy. I was never being asked, "Hey, how are you guys doing in purity? Hey, I've, you know, you guys checked in with one another, making sure you're really sticking to your boundaries." Well, like I didn't have that. And I desperately wanted that and needed that, but um yes. So So he was kind of making you feel like that even before sex yeah. was part of the equation? Yes. So, so yeah, even when it was, before. yeah, you guys would go further than mm -hmm. you and wanted I, to. Yeah. You would say, we went too far. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. He would say, okay. And then you'd do it again. Mm -hmm. And there was already that pressure of we can't bring accountability in because we're crossing yeah. lines. Yes. I would say to him, like, why don't we bring blah, blah, blah into our relationship and they can like ask us questions, check in with us, blah, blah, blah. Cause I had heard about like accountability partners through a book that I read or something. And he was like, no, like if they find out, they'll break us up. We'll never be able to see each other again. Yeah, right, right, right. And again, like that was a big fear of mine of being alone and not having him as a boyfriend, as a friend, whatever. So, so things are starting to, to progress physically. When did yes. the tattoo come in? That came in after I turned 18. Okay, so, so you're still, okay, so yeah. it's not quite there yet? I had gotten this tattoo. The tattoo yeah. to me is some comedic relief. <laughs> it's some comedic relief that I think is a very interesting, it's a very interesting element to this story. Yes, okay, so. so just don't miss it, just don't miss it, keep going. We had crossed some lines, but we had not had sex at this point. I decide I want to get a tattoo. I know that my parents don't like tattoos at this point in their lives, which now they're totally fine with them. But they, so I was like, well, what kind of tattoo can I get that will like keep my parents from getting mad at me for getting a tattoo? And like, I'll be able to say I have a tattoo. So many lessons. <laughs> So many lessons in this story. So I literally go with my older sister and my boyfriend, this guy. And I get a tattoo that says until marriage and it's like this infinity sign. I don't know what the heck I was thinking, you guys. Well, I told you what I was thinking. So I come home and show my parents and my dad's like, wow, well, that's permanent. 
<laughs> and my mom was like, okay, what are you going to do when you are married? And I was like, it'll be a teaching tool for my child. <laughs> definitely became, it definitely became a teaching tool. <laughs> so that's covered up. <laughs> um, but yes, so got that tattoo, whatever. All right. Moving on, we're probably two and a half years into our relationship. So you honestly, that's kind of impressive. Yes. You guys made it two and a half years. Anytime I hear a couple that's dated for two and a half years, I'm almost <laughs> assuming that they're having. I'm pretty, yeah, pretty confident that sex is happening. Yeah. Well, it was, not always, but it was not. But at this point, I will say that I was at. A very low place with depression once again I had a lot of ups and downs um, and I was feeling just pretty miserable in my life and just struggling um, and so my thought process and again wasn't in the word hadn't been in the word in a long time um, and hadn't gone to church service i don't even know when like was at church but not in church it was weird Mm. um and so the first time that we had sex i think that part of me was thinking well we've crossed literally all these other boundaries so who cares now might as well just cross this line whatever Um, and also was thinking, and we're going to get married eventually. Like I told myself, like, he's my husband, him and I are both like on the same track. I thought we both thought of like, we'll get married eventually. So we ended up having sex. Do not give Satan a foothold. The Bible says, and is that not more true? Mm -hmm. And we're all susceptible of it. Yeah. One thing, the foothold, the snare comes it grows, it gets deeper, and not only the sin, but the mindset around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. The mindset that I had around it of, well, we've done all this other stuff, so who cares if we add one more thing to the list? Like, whatever. <laughs> Guys, she's yeah. she is speaking some fire. <laughs> hey, by the way, guys, if you haven't given this video a thumbs up, help out those ag- algorithms. We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, seriously, if you're appreciating Morgan's vulnerability here, this is this is packed, man. I mean, seriously, like this is packed. It is packed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we had sex and <sighs> there was probably a few months, maybe like two-ish months, three months where I, part of me, I think, enjoyed how, like, secretive and, like, oh, we're being so sneaky and going against what we're, we know we're supposed to do. Like, like, sin was fun for a season for me. And then it all just came crashing down real fast. <laughs> and I think I just started to realize that, like, subconsciously i started to realize this guy's not gonna be my husband but now i've given him a piece of me that like i can't ever get back and now i'm just stuck and i would like talk to him about marriage and like try to get like a date out of him or like when are you thinking you'll propose? When are you thinking we'll get married? And he would just kind of speak out of his butt and say things that he thought I wanted to hear. Morgan, can I be honest real quick? And I, yeah. I did not know how I would feel for this story. In my mind, I'm kind of just, I guess, because emotionally, <laughs> so oftentimes I feel like I am i don't have like a ton of emotions Yeah. <laughs> in certain things. Like I'm a little bit emotionally removed or something. I don't exactly know. Yeah. Maybe it's my ADHD, but... I was kind of thinking like I would just be able to roll with this because I've heard most of it. Mm-hmm. But it's like I'm getting, I'm I find myself getting angry, like <laughs> genuinely angry at the guy, <laughs> because as the men, especially one acknowledging Christ and, and claiming to be a Christian, were called to be the spiritual leaders, and he was anything but that. Yeah. And it really hurts. Um, but all in all, it is in the past. I forgive you. Seriously, um, but it, it really is a shame. And, and so the men watching this, let it be a lesson to you all as well. Absolutely. 
That, that stinks, man. It stinks. Yeah. Um, it was, it, it sucked. <laughs> and so I, I mean, that's really kind of like the end of the story as far as like how it began of falling into premarital sex and we could talk about like the breaking up and whatever but I just wanted to say that I would say my biggest mistakes my four I've got four things um I would say my biggest mistakes that led me into such a messy situation were these four things one I didn't pray for God's will to be done I told him what was going to be done uh, so you guys know this story started with me telling God, God, the next guy that comes into my life is going to be my husband. Okay, thank you. <laughs> like, I didn't say, Lord, like, lean me in these these next steps of my life. When a guy comes in, let me know. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. Number two was I was not in the Word consistently on my own time. Like, even if I was going to church, like, going to church once a week and, like, being poured into is great and all, but it's not enough. Like, I wasn't even getting that on top of I was not in the Word consistently on my own. And neither was this guy. He was only in the Word if I told him to be in the Word. He was only going to church if I told him to go to church. Ladies, are you <laughs> with a guy like that? Get the heck out if you are. I'm not joking. Leave. He's not your leader. He's not your godly man. You are forcing it on him, and he does not want it. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> guys same to you it can happen both ways yes and there is room i'm sorry but the, there is room sometimes the guy grows sometimes the girl grow, grows in a perfect situation more often than not something like this happens just take yeah. that how you want guys take that as a warning yeah um three was i hadn't truly placed someone in my life that i had fully given permission to call me out and hold me accountable um yeah i i'm good I didn't have that. I didn't have community. You know, yes, I had my mom and my dad. I had my boss slash close friend. But, like, I didn't ask any of them to hold me accountable in my relationships. So, I really encourage you to do that. Um, and four, I dated a guy who told me everything I wanted to hear but did not have the lasting fruit to show for what he was saying. So, yes, yeah. this guy told me on our first date that he was a Christian, that he wanted to save sex for marriage, that he was dating for marriage and not just for the fun of it. And you asked me earlier if he was serious and I didn't want to answer because my true answer is no, I do not think that that was his deep desire. I think that he heard it. It sounded good to him. And he was like, yeah, I want those things. But like really, when you look at the whole relationship, like he wanted just... Ooh, it makes me think of the heart is deceitful above all else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was... And I saw that very early on. I actually am now remembering why we broke up at eight months. And it was because I <laughs> saw a video of him with his friends. And he... It was like a longer-ish video. And he was a totally different person than when he was with me he was cursing he was talking really provocatively like totally different and I was just like shocked because that was not the person he portrayed himself as and I just was like what the heck um and so we broke up and then we got back together and then once again like I feel kind of bad that like for so long he just like put on a mask that he had to pretend he was someone that he re wasn't really like I don't understand why he wanted to do that for so long but yep that's my story well, then you know <laughs> the reason stories are so powerful in that short story you were able to convey probably 15 <laughs> major life warnings and life lessons yeah in such a palatable way how did you feel uh, retelling that in perhaps more detail than you have ever or in a long time? Mm -hmm. <sighs> I just know so many people who are walking in the, those exact shoes. Whether you're at the very beginning and you're praying to God, Lord, please let the next person, guy that comes into my life or woman that comes into my life be my husband, be my wife. Or they are going to be. Or you're at the 
12 month mark and you've crossed way too many boundaries but you haven't had sex like i just know there are so many of you guys out there and i personally know people that are there and so for me to be able to talk about it i just pray like lord plant seeds water seeds grow (laughs) the fruit of my story into other people's lives like so it really is encouraging me encouraging to me to share this story with you guys and like I really pray and hope to God that you all do feel encouraged. Whether your story is similar or not, or you have a certain similar testimony and you feel like really bad about it or guilty about it, but now like you're walking with the Lord, like there's no condemnation in Christ. And so like I'm free. And as much as the trolls and Reddit haters want to like get on Paul and say that he makes me feel so terrible, like Paul has never once (laughs) in my life being with him made me feel wrong or dirty or gross or sinful or lesser than for my past and his not past like ever and like that was the first time probably that i've heard him say that he's like angry Uh, (laughs) angry Um, at yeah angry (laughs) angry at how things (laughs) yeah progress and, and the man being such a lousy spiritual leader yeah but um yeah morgan I, I genuinely appreciate you sharing that and you guys watching like if you have friends that you feel like this story morgan's story would um be convicting or be valuable for them to hear consider sharing it comment below morgan what what do you want them to comment below hmm, no idea <laughs> comment below why don't you comment below um you know if you can relate because you've had a similar experience Mm -hmm. comment below some encouragement like morgan was just saying god is the great redeemer and he he washes us white as snow doesn't mean there may be some baggage there Mm -hmm. often can be Mm -hmm. but man like god makes all things new Mm -hmm. he makes all things new and it's it's one of the beautiful things about being in christ being adopted sons and daughters of christ um so yeah comment some encouragement for people that might be struggling with a um a difficult past and also, uh, yeah, just comment if, if you resonate, w- what you resonate with in Morgan's story, or if you just appreciated it. Eee. Way to go, babe. <laughs> uh, story time with p and Really episode one, but in the playlist, I think there's like 12 videos or 14 videos of other <laughs> stories that we've shared. Nice. But I thought this went really well. Same. It was a fun time, guys. <laughs> All right. We love you guys very much. Thanks for watching. A really good turnout for today's yeah. video live audience, and we're excited to get back uh, in engaging with the comments. Love you guys very much. Be blessed. Have hope. And be free. If you're in the live chat, we'll be right back. As you may have noticed, we get very few brand deals, which is why our patrons, the names you see here, are so important. You guys really are the lifeblood of this ministry. We could not do this without you all. If you believe in this content and you want to partner with us on Patreon, click the link below or just go to patreon.com slash Paul and Morgan Show.